Hey there, it's Krishna Perkins with the monthly market update. Uh, this is July 2022. Um, so the second quarter is behind us and uh, we're still collecting the data. The Fed is still crunching the data on whether or not we're in a recession. You know, what does that look like? Um, all um, signs point to, um, you know, yes, that we uh, may be in a recession. It's just two consecutive quarters of negative GDP is the prime definition uh, for a recession. So um, I expect that's going to happen, but let's go ahead and just uh, move forward with the data. Uh, we're going to talk about mortgage rates, recession, talk about local um, uh, inventory uh, levels here in San Antonio. We're going to talk about uh, future uh, forecasts uh, across the nation and, and here in San Antonio. Um, and I kind of want to deliver this in a different format and the good news, bad news format. Uh, I want to give both a uh, little equal light in the uh, report today. So uh, we'll try this out. Um, so first off, mortgage rates and recessions. Here you see on this chart here, we have uh, you know, your mortgage rates and recessions information all the way back to the 70s and how they correlate with um, you know, mortgage rates uh, and recessions together. Um, so here in a different uh, format here, and the good news here, uh, or rather, we'll start out with the bad news is, yes, we have when we have a, um, a time period of high mortgage rates, it usually correlates with the recession. Um, so as you can see, 1980 recession, bad news for uh, home buyers there, high interest rates, 16%. Uh, and the duration there for that recession was six months. The good news is the Fed reacted and brought interest rates down um, uh, to get us out of that particular recession to 11.8%. Um, now that was shortly followed by another recession uh, again in 1981. Again, bad news, high interest rates, 18%. Um, but the good news again on the backside is lower interest rates at 13%. Um, you see this pattern continue in 1990s recession, 2000 recession, uh, the Great Recession, uh, 2007 through 2009, and then again, COVID-19 recession here. Um, uh, so in all these cases, um, the bad news was followed by good news um, in, in interest rates. So we're in that situation now. We're seeing uh, high interest rates uh, relative to what people have been paying over the last couple of years. Um, and uh, we are uh, very well might be in a recession right now um, and you know but the good news is uh, historically you know the interest rates do come down and we look at um, you know uh, you know some breathing room at, at the end of the tunnel so we don't know how long that's gonna take uh, we may see higher interest rates before we ever see uh, lower interest rates uh, we just got to keep an eye on that and what that looks like uh, how how long of a recession, how deep it is, uh, we don't know. We'll just have to continue to, to, to monitor that. Um, and you have to make decisions on your own. You know, should you buy uh, at this time? That depends. You know, how secure is your job? How secure is uh, your financial future? Uh, personally, uh, I wouldn't locally bet on a huge um, drawdown and uh, appreciation. Um, you know, and I'll share some reasons here towards the end. But um, Let's continue to uh, take in the information. Um, so how is the market uh, reacting to these high interest rates that we're seeing right now in 2022? Um, so the bad news is we're, for sellers, we're seeing um, lower, less offers received, okay? We're seeing less offers received. Uh, we're seeing, um, you know, all, over asking price offers declined, okay? So we're not seeing as many over asking uh, um offers um, again uh, and then we're seeing uh, fewer sales so these are all negative things for home sellers okay bad news for home sellers okay um, but the good news here for home buyers is increase in inventory we're seeing a return to pre-pandemic inventory okay levels um, is particularly in new listings here we're bringing new listings to the market and higher numbers um, we're still not where um, you would uh, want to see as far as a balanced market, but again, it's still a piece of good news for home buyers. Um, you know, more inventory, less offers, 
um, to compete against, um, less offers that are over asking price to compete against, and less overall sales. So if you were in the market five months ago, and, and with the interest rates being what they are, yes, they are more expensive, but the environment um, that uh, you're dealing with is much different than it was six months ago. Yes, it is still a seller's market. Uh, yes, you still have to be competitive, particularly for those turnkey prime homes. But um, there are homes out there where you can come in and you can make a bid. Um, uh, some, some homes are not flying off the shelf. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, moving on to um, months worth of inventory. How much inventory is there? Uh, nationally, we're looking at the National Association of Realtors information here, and the supply has steadily been increasing over the last five, six months. Okay, so from January, we started at 1.6 months worth of inventory, and fast forward to May, we're at 2.6 months worth of inventory. Locally, locally, if we look at um, since 2017, uh, we were at three month, little under three months worth of inventory. Okay, um, fast forward to today, and we are below 1.5 months worth of inventory. Um, some is much lower here in San Antonio. So if you if you go back and look at um, national levels versus San Antonio levels, San Antonio, as I've mentioned before in the past, is much hotter than other markets. Um, and I, I predict it will continue to be that way um, regardless, uh, you know, because we're still that net positive market. People are still looking to migrate to areas like this, um, compare us to other cities where, you know, uh, homes are, you know, twice as expensive. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's a, still a buy. It's a buy for people moving from those markets. So, um, so, so on the good news uh, part of it, um, you know, for home sellers, it's still a good time to put your home on the market and sell. You're not going to do well pricing ahead of the market, but uh, you'd still get top dollar for your, your property compared with, uh, you know, other areas. Um, so what are we looking for in the forecast? Um, you know, nationally, uh, 9.3% is still what, uh, the target is for this year. Uh, that's appreciation. So, um, I know a lot of folks are seeing the headlines that, um, you know, their you know, prices are slashing. That's okay. That those are, those are homes, uh, in particular that are overpriced in my opinion. Okay. Overpriced homes are going to have to slash the prices to get get people to buy. It doesn't mean that there's a, it's a crashing that you're having a crash. It means that uh, you're having uh, a realization on the seller side that you can't ask for over market value for homes, you know, exorbitant prices. Um, but you're kind of returning to normal. Okay. Um, but the bottom line is we have a, a super low inventory, even for today's market with today's interest rates. Um, Moving on to 2023, they're still forecasting 4% appreciation rate. 2024, 3.12% appreciation rate. And beyond that, uh, 3.46 for 2025 and 4% for 2026. Um, obviously, um, it, that's if nothing changes um, in the market. Um, you know, we'll continue to mo monitor the market and what is happening with it. Um, but all signs point to continued appreciation until we solve the inventory problem, until builders finally uh, bring more inventory to the market, which we don't know when or how that's going to happen. Uh, it's more expensive to build. Uh, there's still supply shortages. There's still labor shortages in that market. So uh, we'll just continue to see uh, how they react. Now, coming back to locally, big picture locally, something that uh, recently happened this year is that uh, the city of San Antonio's uh, proposed uh, 2022 bond program was approved. Um, and so what does that mean? Uh, it means more um, basically stimulus to this market uh, that will continue to propel prices higher. Okay, um, th this money is going to go into drainage and flood control issues, so making things better. Uh, streets, bridges, sidewalks, uh, parks, recreations, open spaces, facilities, and of course, housing. Um, 
particular affordable housing. So what all that really looks like, um, we will see how that unfolds. But bottom line is there's, a one, there's over a billion dollars worth of investment in this market of San Antonio that is coming. And uh, that will play into housing prices in the future. Um, it will make things, uh, make the city better. Uh, at least we all hope it makes things better. Um, but that is, that is the reality that we're dealing with. So, uh, you know, that money coming into the market, whenever that happens, is going to propel things higher. Okay. So, um, hopefully that gives you some perspective on the market. Um, I'll continue to put out some short videos on different neighborhoods and what they're looking like as far as uh, appreciation um, and home sales stats. Uh, you can check out the playlist here. I have several neighborhoods uh, uh, you know, that you can check out um, and uh, make your own decision. Is this a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? Um, you can reach out to me and um, I'm happy to discuss your situation. And uh, I'll see you guys uh, on the next video.